everybody, and welcome to another episode of Vacuum Exposition. I am on my way to visit the collection of a young man named Corbin uh, out here in Shelton, Washington. Um, and we are going to take a look at uh, his, uh, his stuff. Uh, he is primarily a collector of the newer type vacuum cleaners, so we will get a good look at uh, what he has currently. Um, I am also bringing him a couple of things he, uh, he did want. Uh, maybe I'll get a couple things from him. We don't know yet. So uh, we will probably do a couple of run demos. Now, we won't see Corbin. He asked us not to film in uh, his face, so uh, that won't be a problem. But uh, we certainly will get some coverage of his collection. So um, aside from that, we will be doing our normal, you know, exposition. It'll just have to wait until after we get back to the shop. Um, and then we will go from there. Um, so I will see you guys at Corbin's. Well, upon arriving at Corbin's uh, uh, home there, uh, we did get a chance to take a look around at some of our uh, favorite vacuum cleaners of the new era uh, that he had in his collection. Uh, some being uh, some of the uh, earlier wind tunnels, a couple of phantoms that here and there. Um, he did also manage to bring out um, his latest dream machine that he got in the mail, which is really, really cool. Is one of those Phantom uh, Furies. Uh, it's a special edition, and I'll, uh, I'll show the video of uh, him running that uh, right here. As we can see, it, uh, it does have some dry bearings, but overall runs pretty nice considering these machines came out in you know, that late 80s, early 90s time frame as a, an answer to things like Dyson's and uh, uh, things like the Clear Track, uh, you know, as competition against bagged machines, which uh, really, really cool um, things to find. Um, but, you know, after we just kind of uh, chilled and talked and took a look at some of his stuff, um, so he had some of his collection kind of outside and he had some in his car, um, some in the, in his, uh, home as well, so he kind of had vacuums everywhere, which is really cool. But vacuum cleaners aside, he's a really nice guy. I was glad to meet him, glad to make another connection in the vacuum world. Um, so, uh, which leads us back here to the shop. So, I did want to take a look at a specific machine today. This is one I, I got a little bit more frequently um, from one of my trips down to Eugene um, from um, our friend Jared down there. Um, he gave this machine to me. Um, so uh, I wanted to do a little bit of an exposition on it now that I've done a little bit more research. Uh, and incidentally, if any of you guys were wondering kind of how I format these videos or how I do it, what I do to get ready, um, I put in hours of research before every video. Um, you can ask my friends, family, my wife, they will all attest to that. I will sit there and I will study for hours, looking for hours for pictures or ads or articles that mention these machines. Sometimes I come up with a lot of stuff. Sometimes not so much. Um, this particular machine we're gonna look at today, I found one uh, kind of a spreadsheet article that had, you know, uh, spec uh, specifications for the motor as well as the power nozzle and whatnot. Um, but not a whole lot else, you know? There isn't even like a specific um, date for this particular machine, just based on uh, what information I found on it. Because um, it has to be one of the more uncommon versions of this machine. Uh, and we have seen one of these before actually, but uh, I did want to bring this one out because uh, as soon as I got it back and, you know, put a hose to it, you know, it was super, super cool. Um, so, without further ado, let's get on to the exposition today. All right, everybody, so this is what we are looking at today. Before I get to that, the low hum in the background, really apologize about that. Um, it is very hot 
<laughs> in uh, in the, the shop today. So we are going to be having a fan, uh, and by we I mean me, I'm going to have a fan so I don't keel over. So, just so you guys know. But, what we are looking at today, this is a Hoover Spirit. As some of you probably remember, when we were back in uh, Tennessee and Kentucky, we took a look at one of these that we found in, uh, in a storage, not storage, but we found in a swap meet. So, that was a really cool machine, and we will take a little more in-depth look at that particular model at a later date. Um, that one, I want to get all spruced up and cleaned up for you guys. Um, this one has already kind of gone through a, lot, a little bit of that, so I wanted to expose it. Now, this one I found when I was down in Eugene with uh, Jared. It was uh, kind of separated, if you will. Uh, the power nozzle was one place, and the canister was a whole different place. So um, I thought, you know what, we needed to combine these together, and, you know, we were moving things around, and Jared said, go ahead and put it in your car. So I said, yep. So I got it home. Now, unfortunately for this one, it was missing a hose. But fortunately, the hose for things like the Celebrity and obviously the Spirit and a couple other machines were about the same thing. So I had a spare parts Celebrity uh, that I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with it first. So um, I went ahead and robbed its hose from it and now it belongs to this one. So um, this little spirit, like I've said previous, they came in and out in the early 80s, this one being about a 1981, 82 model. Uh, this is a model S3209, for those of you that are wondering. Uh, the 3209, uh, it came out with a couple different models, including uh, a top of the line spirit with you know, the same power nozzle that would have come out with uh, you know, with like the dimension canisters for those that know those. Um, so uh, this was more so of the bottom of the line for a power nozzle canister, uh, if you were looking for one back in the day. Uh, that being said, these are actually really, really nice machines. I have another one that we're gonna take a look at that I actually rebuilt with my late friend Jake. Um, that one's sitting in Kansas, but we will take a look at that one. That one is gray. Uh, this one though is an almond, and like a burnt orange color, um, as you can kind of see from here. Um, or just brown and beige, honestly. It's, that's what it is, I guess, you know? But it is a really cool color combination. I love that it has the power nozzle. Because all too often, canisters that originally come with power nozzles, they get separated, you know? Uh, you know, people, they use that canister with the power nozzle for a long time, and maybe the belt breaks. And it's kind of like, well, now what am I supposed to do if you don't really know what you're doing? You take it into a vacuum shop, and they're gonna charge an arm and leg to just replace a belt, which takes me all about five to 10 minutes, depending on what the power nozzle, of course. These, very easy. But, you know, as somebody that doesn't know much about it, it's like, well, you know, the power nozzle's pooched because there's not really much that we can do if it doesn't rotate. So you have floor nozzles that you can use, which work. Um, but ultimately, it's kind of like, why keep the power nozzle around if it's broken? Or why keep this added attachment if you know you have primarily hardwood floors? Brush rolls and beater bars, not very good on, on hard floors, which a lot of these work. Even that little orange one that we got in Nashville, that one it wasn't a power nozzle model, it would have been perfect for hard floors. So, hard floor canisters were really dominant in that way. You wanted an upright for when you did the carpets just to kind of push your way through them, which is why power nozzles were ultimately created. Um, for those that wanted an all-for-one vacuum that wasn't going to weigh a ton like a Kirby usually did, um, or really any upright. Um, so, it was more versatile, more usable, and in the 80s, Price-wise, this was a lot more, you know, feasible. So, like I stated a little bit before, you know, when I did my research on this, I was really only able to find just some chitter-chatter about it online. Um, you know, just basic what the colors were and what the, associated with the model and date range of where it came out. Uh, but then I also found the spec sheet 
had, you know, this model on it. Uh, and that's ultimately all I found on it. There's no mention, really, of this very much anywhere. Um, I looked everywhere, high and low, just to see what this specific unit, if anybody else had it, to no avail. So, currently, this uncommon little spirit is the only one that we are going to see online. Unless somebody else can provide me with some more pictures, I have searched high and low. But either way, this is a really cool machine. I'm really appreciative to Jared for letting me have this one. Um, Hoover canisters like this one are super fun. They're super easy to work on. And when they clean up, they just pop. Uh, this one, no different. Even though they're kind of boring colors, the look of it is great. So without further ado, we are going to go into our run demo for this fabulous little machine. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. So as we can see, we have our power nozzle right here, our Quadriflex power mallet. You know, very technological, of course. So without further ado, we are going to turn this little bad boy on and uh, roll her across the carpet. <laughs> for those that are still wondering. But this really concludes our demo for today. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed our little video today. Um, you know, just going over uh, Corbin's little collection there that we were able to see and uh, play around with a little bit and um, do some, uh, some exchanges and whatnot. Um, definitely was really good to meet another collector in the area. Um, Shelton, Washington is uh, maybe about 20, 30 minutes away from where I live, so um, not too far, thankfully. But, um, uh, and of course, I do hope you enjoyed our little exposition on the, uh, the Hoover Spirit. It, it was definitely a really nice gift from Jared, and I'm super stoked to have it in my collection. Of course, it will be hanging around for quite some time, just to, you know there for uh, displays for 80s machines so um we will definitely be looking at that uh kind of stuff more uh, i know there's a lot of people on here that really like some of the newer stuff that i've been doing so buckle your seat belts because i have planned uh some series coming up uh for uh towards the end of the year because i still have a film schedule that i have up until then uh but i do have a very fun series plan for December for those of you interested specifically in a certain cyclonic vacuum cleaner. So be prepared for that. I know that's a ways off. We've got a few uh, months before we do that, but I wanted to gear you guys up just to give you kind of the, you know, advertisement, if anything, uh, for the rest of the year. Um, now, obviously, I do have a couple other series for older machines coming up here soon, so uh, be prepared for that. Uh, we'll be looking at some older Eurekas coming up here soon, as well as some Hoovers. Um, I also want to dive more deep into canisters. I know I do a lot of uprights, and today's video is even a canister, but I do want to get into some of my older canisters, some of the older Electroluxes. I've got a really cool Model G Electrolux that I'm uh, going to be doing a video on uh, in the next couple of weeks, actually. Um, so stay tuned for all of that. Thank you again for all watching. Um, it is a major appreciation there. If you guys have any more questions, comments, concerns, I love to hear them. Um, and you know, I would love it if I had any other, uh, 
you know, requests to do any videos. I know I've got like a myriad of vacuum cleaners um, just behind me, first and foremost, but I do have, like I said, my OG collection room was moved into a whole different unit that we haven't really filmed in quite yet just because I'm still organizing and making that one usable so that we can. Um, but I digress. So once again, thank you all for watching. Tune in next Sunday as usual. Same place, same guy, you know, same general topic, you know. Um, catch you next Sunday.